What's going on everyone? Steven here from TechMaker. This is building an NFT bookstore with React.js part four. In the last episode, we started setting up the user interface a little bit. We introduced some basic components. And in this episode, I'm gonna keep pushing in that direction. So what we have right now is basically some hard-coded components. Um, we're just printing out four. And what I wanna do is sort of refactor what we have right now so that instead of just hard coding out each individual uh, book that's in our publishing list, what we're going to do is pull it in from some data. And uh, basically what that's going to do is get us set up so that when we integrate with Aleph in a couple of episodes, um, we can push data to Aleph and then pull back a list of things that we've you know created and display that without having to change our front end at all. And also what having a data set is going to allow us to do is essentially build out this essentially JSON structure, um, which will give us, will we'll include an ID in it. And so what we're going to do is link to a page where there's an ID in the URL. And then when we click on one of these titles, we'll have that data in the state, and then we'll be able to pull that data in and show the details of that individual item. So that may not make sense yet, but it will soon. So if we go back over to our code, what I wanna do first is open up this app.js and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down and let's look at exactly what's being set in our state. So basically we have our state storage value, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we don't really, we may not even need to do that. What, what we can do is just pass in. So what we're gonna do in the future, sorry, I'm kind of rambling. Um, it's kind of like, as I said, I'm kind of thinking through this as we go, which is part of the process. Um, I want you to kind of see my thought process. So what we're gonna need to do is in the future, we're gonna pull from Web3. Um, actually, we'll connect with Aleph and Web3 and we'll pull some data back from Aleph, and then we'll need to push that data into the state. Um, and basically, uh, let's see. So when we have this publishing list, we could pass the state directly down in here. So as you may have guessed, if you're watching this, um, I'm a professional engineer, but React.js is not my main thing that I always do. So I know it enough, but like, I kind of am still figuring my way around a little bit, but I wanted I, I wanted to use a cool framework for this because Web3 is primarily JavaScript based. So uh, anyway, so what we're gonna do, and I think um, what we can do is basically up here in our set state, um, we can add a new, uh, a new item to the state here and we can say publishing list like this. And basically you can see here that we're setting default values in this state object. Now, the reason we're setting defaults is because we wanna have uh, something to display while we're fetching the data. Because remember the front end is gonna load and then it's gonna pull data in dynamically, which is why you have this storage value thing. And this is gonna go away eventually. I've just got everything commented out. I'm kind of leaving in some of the boilerplate project this came with. Uh, but it starts off saying that there's a storage value of zero on the screen, and then once the data comes back from on chain, it updates once we sign the con or we sign the transaction for the contract, uh, which we reviewed in either the first or second part of this React series. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what we need to do with this publishing list is eventually we'll, we'll start off with an empty array and then down here we'll like go fetch that list from Aleph. And again, Aleph is going to be our decentralized database and servers that we're going to use uh, for this project. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to go get a publishing list from Aleph and then that will update the screen. And then for each item in the publishing list, we'll also have to query the chain to see like, has it been published? How many copies are left? Because that sort of stuff is going to be stored on the actual blockchain. Um, okay. But for now, we don't actually need to go query that. So I'm just going to kind of like uh, shim this in here, as you might say. Um, so basically I'm going to say, let, or we can say, uh, yeah, let publishing list 
equal an array. And then down here, we'll just say publishing list. And maybe I don't need to put that with that like that. Yeah, this I'm not, I'm not quite as used to this class uh, situation here. So maybe I need to kind of change that up in the next few videos at some point before we get too much code written. I just wanted to kind of get a few things set up because otherwise it gets too boring in my opinion. So let's set up our publishing list with one item right now. And let's open up our publishing list over here. Not that one, publishing list. And what I'm gonna do is just copy these like this and paste that in here. And we'll just JSONify all these things like that. So basically comma separate it and replace all of the equals with uh, semicolons, not semicolons, colons. Okay, now we should we go with that. So you can see when we save this, uh, we're getting a problem because it's saying uh, publishing list is not defined. And I think that has to do with the way this class stuff is working. And honestly, I don't really care to try to figure it out right now. So what I'm gonna do is just basically put all of these things on new lines and I'm gonna go ahead and just like paste the publishing list in here um, and we'll reformat it uh, kind of like this. And this is gonna be a little bit of an annoying uh, for the moment, but that's okay, because this is gonna be dynamic in the near future, so we'll save. Okay, so now we should have publishing lists in our state. Let's go check over here. So now we're up and running, uh, and, or still running rather. Okay, so down here you can see that we have access to this.state. And basically what I want to do is just basically, sorry, that's a lot of basically's. Uh, actually, this should be an array now that I'm thinking about it or looking at it. Um, let's go ahead and indent all this stuff. And what I want to do is just pass in this.state.publishing list down in my publishing list. So we'll say publishing. Or we can just say list equals this um, this dot state dot publishing list like that, and if we say we should still be good, let's come over here, still good. Okay, looks like we're still good to go. So let's jump back to the code. So now that we've got this set up, what we want to do is go over to our publishing list and just do a sanity check just to make sure that we have our data. Uh, so I just want to print out this dot prop. No, not this dot props. I want to do no. It's this dot props. Dot list is what we called it. Not list list. Uh, we'll get the first element out of there, and then we'll just say title. So if we save that, um, you'll see now we have getting started with React printing out there. So we have our data coming through. You will get a weird error if you just try to print out the list. Uh, it's going to tell you something about failed to load web3, which is a confusing error. But if you read up here, it's going to say objects are not valid as a React child, which honestly probably means something. But basically, it's telling you you can't try to print out an object inside these curly braces. So, But anyway, we saw it. We know our data is coming in, so we're good. OK, so what we want to do to wrap this up, the first thing is I'm going to add an ID here. Now we could make this a number, um, but I happen to know that we're going to be using some kind of hash. So it's going to be just a bunch of strings of, or it's a string of a bunch of random characters coming back uh, from a left. So it doesn't really matter what we put in there right now. Um, and then what we want to do is actually loop through. So right now in our table body, we're just hard coding in all of these things. And what we want to do is instead of that, we want to say um, this.props.list.map. And then we're going to say list. And then that's going to take in, let's see, how should we format this? 
I guess we could actually do it like this. We could just do an arrow function straight up and put out a publishing item like that. And then let's go ahead and get rid of the rest of these. I may have mistyped something in there. Let's see. Uh, this is not exactly pretty. I'm actually wondering if it would make sense because I, I hard coded all this stuff because it kind of made sense to pass these in as attributes, but basically we're actually passing in an item, right? So first of all, I've mislabeled this. This should be item. Um, so it's like a list item. And then maybe we should refactor all of this to be item equals item. And then maybe we can make this, I'm just seeing if I can get this to format a little bit better. Maybe we could actually make this a self-closing object here. And then over in our publishing thing, maybe we could say this.props. It's a lot of dots. I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but whatever. So this.props.item.item.item dot .item dot item, and then one more down here dot item. So if we save that and we save this, are we still compiling? Let's go check our browser. So now we've got one item in our list. So that's pretty cool. All right, so what we wanna do next is basically get this set up to render multiple things. And it's pretty much just adding items to the list. Uh, there's one more thing we're gonna need to do uh, to kind of make this complete. So let's copy this. And let's just change up this ID a little bit. Um, doesn't need to be a lot. And let's just say getting started with Ruby. There's 123 copies left. And yes, not Tess. Yes, it has been published. So if we save this, it's gonna show up. Well, it would if I didn't make an error. Let's see here. Okay, so if that compiles, now we should be able to go see that's showing up. But if we inspect the screen, we're gonna get a JavaScript console error, I believe, telling us that we need to give it a unique key. Okay, so in order to give it a unique key, the best place to do that is in our publishing list. When we say publishing list, item equals item, here we can say key equals item.id. Just save that and come back. And now you can see this warning is not here anymore. So we're good to go. Um, basically that just helps React keep track of which item is which. Um, it needs to be unique. So what's gonna happen is when we pull this data back from a left, there will be an ID in here, but it'll be a hash. And we might need to like, um, we might need to rename some of these attributes whenever we get to that integration. So we could end up needing to change some of the stuff down in here, or we could create what you might call an adapter so that we m like morph the data coming from ALF into this format. Um, but in all likelihood, we'll just try to make it match because that's easier. Um, but yeah, anyway, so now what's happening is we're passing data in from the top level, which we will eventually query from somewhere else. Um, and passing it in through our, we're iterating through in our publishing list and iterating and printing out each list item. And this code is pretty neat. Um, so this is pretty simple. So far we're iterating through a list, so on and so forth, no big deal. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually create links on these titles so that they go to a, like a, an actual URL so we can click and um, go to a new page, which is just that list item and all the various details. Um, so that should be cool. Um, that'll be the next episode and we'll get into using the React router. But I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, as always, if you made it this far, uh, good on you. Um, hopefully you're learning some stuff. Hopefully you're enjoying this. I really appreciate um, all the uh, subscribers that we've been getting. And uh, yeah, hopefully you keep tagging along with us and we keep doing some cool stuff. And um, anyway, all that said, I'll talk to you in the next episode.